just to introduce our guest today, uh, Vitaly is someone I, I met actually um, in Nairobi and Dave Foster was there also and uh, got to know him. And of course I was intrigued because he's working in Ukraine and that is definitely um, an interest of a lot of us. Um, and just began to hear his heart and what's going on in Ukraine. And he is a, a, a DMM catalyst there um, with new generations. And so I'm going to ask him a, a few preliminary questions, but then we want to open it up to all of us. And then we want to pray for you, uh, Vitaly, and then maybe also have you pray for us, too. I thought, first of all, Vitaly, it'd be just helpful for us to just understand kind of your journey, um, how you got introduced to uh, the DMM principles and approach. Okay. <clears throat> I'm just, um, first of all, um, hello to everyone. And I want to say <laughs> uh, sorry for my English because it's maybe uh, I need better. Um, I will talk better with, with some translator, but I will try to do my best. <laughs> um, about seven, eight years ago, uh, um, I was uh, like, um, I had a good job, uh, a uh, good uh, job, and uh, I was working in, uh, as a regional manager in one European company. And I was uh, as a, as also, I work in a church as a deacon, uh, like serve, I mean, not work, like serve. Uh, and it's like was Baptist church. Um, but my boss, he and I lived in Khmelnytsky. It's this like city about three hundred thousand people between western and central Ukraine. So it's like central western part. But my boss is uh, calling me to join the team in Kiev and to take and lead the direction as a K count manager. So I pray, and God says to me, "Yeah, you can. You have to go." So I will go there and uh, I stay there in uh, one year and uh, I travel a lot and have success in, in that business. So I sell a lot. So I was a successful manager. <laughs> uh, but I feel like, you know, um, it's not satisfied me. I'm, it's not that what I'm living for. Uh, good job, good money. Mm, like uh, all uh, assurance like for all family they cover all expenses but I was not satisfied about that and I start praying about what God what you want from my life and I hear exactly he says that yeah, I have to come back to my city and first thing that I put on my mind that I have to we have to change our old traditional church you know change the rules like be more open because that time in Kiev, I joined the like very nice church. There was like, uh, they made a, a good job with the people. They evangelize a lot. So um, I said to the boss, I have to come back. I came back to my city. They was like, they don't understand why I'm doing that, but I tried to explain, but they don't understand. So, but they decided to leave me in a, uh, to, to leave me in the company and give me responsible for Moldova because my city not so far from Moldova country and I was responsible for Moldova like two years but, but I was surprised that church that's my church where I grew up don't want any changes they like was happy in their life what they do and they just when I try to change something I always like fight you know and I start praying, God, why are you calling me back? Because I can't change nothing. And just tell me, who am I? I am a revolutionary or missionary. What do I have to do? <laughs> and uh, I received again clear like answer. Just change your sword to the plug and work hard. <laughs> Don't fight with the rules. And after that, I asked the like. Uh, the church to bless me uh, for my family and we will plant a new church we don't know 
how it will be, where it will be. They ask me a lot of questions, but I can't answer for them. I just understand that God tell me to do that. Uh, when we, when we, they, in the end of all, they blessed us and we just start, try to like gather people, but we don't want to repeat the same mistakes what they, what we saw already. And you, the truth is you can't start something new when you don't know what you want <laughs> to start. And I just start uh, to research the new knowledge. You know, I have to know, know something new to start something new. And I found the video of David Watson, How to Plant the Churches in YouTube, on, on the YouTube, 10 lessons. Me and my wife and one family joined us, we saw it quickly. And it was like, was like something amazing. I never heard before. And I just try to follow, try to follow these like simple uh, principles. And during one year of tries and mistakes, I have zero result. I was tired. I don't have no result. I even have, I even uh, didn't find a white disciple. I was uh, disappointed. I totally, you know, like, because I was the part of big church. I have a good influence, good relationships. And I like sell this all and buy something that I don't know and how it works. <laughs> and in the end of all, I have zero. In that time, I meet uh, guys who are uh, already practicing, like making first steps, uh, a G-Man principle. Because Harry Brown and Sergei Hriponov just came to Ukraine and shared these principles with the, some, some, some guys, some team. And um, I, I joined them that period, but still no result. So I once I just walked in the city and I cry inside I said God I can do nothing I'm zero like just give me just only one person that I can bring to the God to you I can disciple him uh, and that time when I pray hard in this way God just send me first my first disciple and you can imagine it was a director of nightclub. Um, I know him because he grew up in a, he was in my neighborhood, but he was older than me in 10 years. So we never told, be, talking before, but we know each other. We saw each other because we live close. We live close. And I met him and say hi. And I don't know why I asked him, how is your relationship with God? Because, because I never ask the people these questions. <laughs> and we start immediately spiritual conversation. But he was a director at the dirtiest place in our city. Uh, uh, drugs, prostitutes, all night discotheque, and police always like there. <laughs> oh, we start to read the Bible with him in this uh, nightclub before the disco started. And in the, um, after the three weeks of reading, he was, he repent. Uh, then in a month, I baptized him. And he tell me, you know, I can't anymore stay in this club. What I have to do? I, I, I told him, you know, I don't know only even one priest or somebody who will come to that people and share the gospel in this club. <laughs> so if you can stay and continue sharing the gospel with that people, just try. And he start to gather the people who works their stuff and share the, the, the gospel. And the, the owner of this club, he saw on this situation and he immediately fired him. <laughs> because he started to share. This was my first disciple. Uh, you know, uh, after that, of course, I was really encouraged of that example from God that he, he, 
because this guy shared that three days before I met you, I so tired from my lifestyle because I'm a lot of uh, smoking the drug, the marijuana, marijuana and uh, all these things. And I, I have a small three kids. What an example. I, I'm just tired. And I ask God, if you, if you, you listen to me, just send, um, send to me a person or the book whom I can follow just to change my life. Because I don't know, in my, uh, <clears throat> the people around, I can't find uh, such a person. And I met you. <laughs> he said he told me that. So I was, wow. Uh, it, it was a moment for me, like that God has a lot of people with whom he like working. Yeah. Um, and um, from that moment, I uh, understand a lot of like things that I have more um, like. Mm, that that my um, oh how to say that I have to pray more than than to do <laughs> no, first I have to focus on my prayer then I have just follow that I see and what God tell me um uh, after that uh, we. Uh, I, baptized, I found another one that guy joined me and started to share the gospel with another people and very soon like uh, we grow up and the next year I baptized another two guys I discipled them and next year they disciple their wives wow. the family joins to the, to the other church and uh, after next year, they baptized one, one guy, baptized their grandparents and uh, uh, his friends. So their home church started. So, like, it, it was grow like that. And uh, we joined the uh, during this whole period, we just uh, spoke with um, our, um, we have a meetings with our uh, like friends who also following like uh, Jesus in uh, developing themselves in a DMM process and um, our team growing up and uh, now right now uh, and and uh, till until the war started we had uh, 28 uh, churches like in, in a DMM wow. so but started and uh, uh, we think that <laughs> life uh, fin finished for us because uh, people just run oh it was crazy times like we still moving in the fog you know <laughs> after that situation I'll maybe just share a little bit Vitaly just how things have changed um, since the, the beginning of the, the war <sighs> uh, what have been the biggest change yeah. and what is it what is it like to, to lead a movement you know of, of churches and disciple makers during a time mm -hmm. like this in yeah. your country? Oh, uh, the first of all, like God put on my mind just to take my family and bring them to the Italy, first of February. Because I just mentioned that something will, can happen because I have it uh, next month, I have to travel. And uh, war started. Uh, then I kn knew that, and so big, <coughs> like flow of refugees, thousand, hundred thousand people, um, goes uh, like through our city because we are on the way to the west. You can imagine first days of the war, uh, hundred, one hundred fifty thousands. Uh, I say correct. Uh, uh, 100,000 and 50,000, 150,000, it's right? Mm -hmm. It's uh, one zero one five zero 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 zero. <laughs> just so one in one day, just go across the border to the Poland. It's just for the one day. Yeah. So, and it continues to the, just first two weeks. So uh, uh, when I 
came back from my trip to the Poland, I'm just so like full of you know, railway station, like full of the people and all that people from Ukraine. Uh, and um, um, as I stay in Europe and I have a three kids on, until the 18, I uh, can go in and out of Ukraine. So, uh, because men's now have uh, restrictions, they can go out from Ukraine because of the war. Um, so I uh, have this like has a special opportunity. <coughs> so I I come to my house. Uh, I leave the before that I leave the key from our house uh, to my, to our leaders, and they made a like um, office from our house. <laughs> And at that moment, for this like first 10 days, about 50 people lived in my house. So when I came, at, it was like two weeks after the war started, I, I can uh, I come back to my house and uh, I just <laughs> knock into the door and says, can I stay for the night here? <laughs> it's so many refugees like running from the war, from the Kiev area because the time uh, Russian troops stay close close to the Kiev uh, and we like uh, immediately stay in prayer and fasting what we have to do all our team take a fast for the three days we just fasting and ask God what we have to do how we can serve the people and we just decided because that you the people stay in the house like for a day for a few hours just to sleep a little bit and uh, continue walk. So we just uh, pray with them, read the short scripture, and bring, uh, sharing the uh, the gospel, and send them to the west. Uh, at the same time, got put on my mind to start work in uh, Europe because so many refugees, and that people like if people in Ukraine. Uh, like struggling but that people struggling more because they leave their places and they like don't know the language don't know nothing you know like they in another country so um we, we immediately start to gather our leaders some of our leaders move move to the poland before the war started and they stay live there like year or two years so gathering them we start the uh, immediately start the groups and uh, we found that uh, our leaders because the war not, not only leaders but just the people from our movement about 50 people now in Europe in different uh, cities about 50 about 26 cities uh, 13 countries and for that time for that moment we already started uh, 13 groups TBS groups uh, so God changing bad things for the good things in it, and give us opportunity to share the gospel with these people, uh, start to read the Bible. We start the DBS group, Discovery Bible uh, study groups. So, and it, it was very, very interesting because people in Europe, so our people, Ukrainians, so open because they just want to talk with somebody who talking there language <laughs> and when we just started that group for simply reason i just um, uh, our people they very creative and they immediately when they stay in some city they create a group in uh, telegram or viber for example like ukrainians in krakow or ukrainians in the region in yeah. um, it's italy wow. so and th they immediately made it so I just founded groups and shared the just simply post who wants to join us on Wednesday in the evening, seven o'clock, just read the Bible and pray for Ukraine. Immediately people come. They, they so open because they needed support. And just simply simple message. I don't, you know, like don't use many tactics and strategics, just simply send that. People comes and we started groups. Uh, they just want to talk, 
they prayed for the Ukraine, for the army, for the victory, and they're struggling and just want to talk with the Ukrainians there, like to, to continue be as a like as a community to feel that. Oh, um, so how we started these groups? I I uh, got put in my, <laughs> my mind before like six months before the war started to to uh, translate a Waha app. You heard about Waha? Yeah. Yeah. We translated Waha and we use it immediately. It was like a great tool for us for this moment because you don't know how long that people stay with you. And uh, I've just lead first lesson from creation to Christ, ask the question. And in the end, I ask who wants, who wants to be next? Uh, and non-believers just take that. Uh, uh, one woman, for example, in, in here in Italy, we also created a group and now that uh, people, uh, that people are in the faith. So they follow in Christ. Because when just now, just yesterday, we finished the plan from from uh, uh, creation to Christ. <laughs> and they is so inspired of that process. And uh, I just lead first uh, group. Other people lead, no, because I'm uh, traveling a lot. So I just give them app, explain how it works. And they uh, lead in the groups. So they, and you know, if uh, on the first meeting, people just sitting and they even don't want to read the Bible, say it's not uh, for me. But that woman who tell us, they she leads a third meeting <laughs> because she found this was very was very interesting, and uh, he, uh, I saw how the life uh, changed, uh, changing, change it was changed. I was so inspired of this process. How simple is it? How uh, God opened their hearts in this critical situation. They, uh, some of them lost their houses. Some of them, they lost the, uh, the relatives. Uh, but God still continue work with us in this situation and give us a hope through his word, and mm. uh, that's where we are now. Yeah. You Sorry again for my English. No, I, no. I, I want to explain great, more, yeah. but I, you, my you vocabulary is... <laughs> you mentioned to me, you know, that you guys lost um, some close people um, in your, your church um, in Ukraine, and, yeah. and I just was curious how you processed that. Um, I think it was a, a son of one of the the leaders that works with you? Yeah, just uh, I was um, a few weeks in, in Ukraine and we have a like, DMM meeting and immediately, and we praise God that uh, because uh, son of our, one of our K leader, he was uh, in, the, in the army and he was in the South he just uh, was in army uh, on the front line. So, and he sent us how God saved him. He, and this, it was it Saturday. He sent the pictures of the bullets in power bank and in, in his uh, sh um, helmet. But helmet, in the helmet. But, and he is live and even don't have any, uh, nothing, like just, uh, we praise God for this amazing safety. And, uh, so, so, uh, and he, uh, next day he sent us, he sent to his father video, just he's sitting in the, and we, we hear that like the gunshots uh, on the back uh, and he praying like uh, and he sang thanks God that he alive and we also 
when we gather together, we praise God that he alive. But when the parents come came back during the roast or come back home on Sunday, uh, they lost the connection with him. And in evening, one sister wor worked with the papers. He received and sold his last name in uh, like he dies in the list. But we decided to tell him that family in the morning that he dies. We tell them and it was like very hard for them they still need our prayers we pray for them to 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 uh, they like that god uh, heal their hearts uh, because they're broken yeah it happens now right now with us so. um their names is ruslan and natalia you you can pray for them as well. Um, yeah, we definitely want to spend just some time at the end, just praying for for you and and the leaders and and for families that have been uh, hurt in a lot of different ways. But um, I was also wondering too if you could just share. Um, just um, you you have coffee shops, and you also do a lot of yeah. like um, work. And you use that for engagement. Uh, I yeah. wondered if you could share a little bit about that. Yeah, when I leave my um, job, we, we decided with my partners, they also uh, Christians, start the coffee shop first, just, uh, just one. But it was very successful when we decided to develop an, uh, another one. And in the end of all, we have eight <laughs> coffee shops, chain of coffee shops. So uh, I when I was in, um, before the war, I was like um, um, co-owner and, and commercial director. So I just um, work in daily. And this is the great business because you meet thousand people. So we sell in, in one day, just thousand people a cup of coffee. And we doing a lot of good things to start the conversation with, with people. So we, and our administrator even was uh, born again, uh, j j just repent and uh, bapt was baptized. Uh, because when she comes to uh, our like uh, business, she, that woman, she was unbeliever. And many people like, come to the face. Um, and I put to the system the short proverbs from the from the proverbs from the Bible. Uh, for example, like uh, when you just focusing on the clouds, you never uh, come and start to harvest, work in the harvest. You know, like something like that. And then we print it on the uh, receipt. It's automatically. And people like that, it's like short information. And this is uh, very often <clears throat> for us, like, oh, this is like for you. You can read what is uh, what is for you. It's like they reading. Uh, and this is a good point to start conversa conversation. So um, also uh, as I live in a like, um, try to follow in healthy lifestyle, uh, and I'm a, a coach and instructor of Total Fit. Maybe you heard about this system of fitness. It is about a um, holistic um, way of how to reach the holistic health um, uh, on the three level, uh, body, mind, and spirit. So I used it also and I, co and I was coaching just uh, one hour per day, every day. Uh, I had a, a lead, lead a group of 15 people and um, we implement the principles what you're thankful for uh, do you have any needs and all these things uh, to the group total fit group yeah discovery while you're working out yeah then. <clears throat> yeah, yeah during workout yeah and in the end when we're doing the situation we just uh, sharing short scripture and they just uh, 
med med meditate and think how they can apply and with whom they can share, something like that. <laughs> the same as we do <laughs> in the Bible studies, yeah. yeah. Uh, so this works um, like that. Wanted to just open it up to anybody that has a, a question um, while they're getting ready to ask you questions. Maybe, maybe you could just share the biggest lesson that you're learning right now, the, the biggest takeaways that you're learning right now um, during the season that you guys are in. Uh, during this season, I'm just um, learning that uh, I leave the, when you leave the leaders, they growing up faster than with you. Okay. <laughs> That's what I learned. You leave them. Last my lessons. Because <clears throat> I leave that leaders and I saw that for the last, this half of the year, they take responsible, do a lot of things. So I, um, I was very happy about that. Oh, cool. Well, if you have it, any questions, uh, feel free to just take yourself off mute. Right. The question, uh, Vital, is about resources, mainly in Ukrainian and Russian. We've started a bilingual English-Russian group with a Ukrainian family. So we, we're trying to get... Uh, we're using the new Russian translation. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we also were wondering if there's, you know, things like the habits training... Is that available in Russian or Ukrainian? Uh, what about songs? Um, what would be good songs to use in either of those languages, uh, like YouTube, that sort of thing, with the words on the screen? Oh, it... oh okay. I can share with you some songs. Uh, oh, thank you, you yes. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, also, we uh, when um, when we found that uh, Russian language stay like toxic for Ukrainians, especially for refugees because they are refugees because they're Russian. Uh, yeah. We immediately start translation for Ukrainian, and we translated Vacha in Ukrainian language as well. So, because before the war we have a Russian, only Russian, but we use the Russian ones, no problem. But when the war started, it's like uh, people don't want it anymore to speak in Russian. Well, these uh, our group. They're from the very east. Um, okay. Oh, they speak Russian. Yeah. yeah. So they they speak Russian mainly. Uh, in fact. Yeah, yeah. We've we met Natasha, the main lady, five years ago, um, and she's she's brought her mother and brother to Scotland from that war zone. They were trapped there and they've escaped. So the other question I had was about trauma seems to be a really big issue it's huge and it's maybe people don't have an opportunity to get yeah. healing from it because you know they've traveled they're just trying to survive um yeah but trauma seems to be a, a, a huge issue it is for yeah um our friend's mother uh she's been very traumatized yeah mm. Uh, my wife uh, um, is one. She um, uh, was in a training and a, she coaching trauma healing. Uh, so um, we use these uh, principles, and also we have a book online, also like trauma healing. Oh, you can okay. share or oh, in Ukrainian if you if you need it, yeah, no problem. Oh, Just write you, me. Yeah. I, I will send. I will send you all uh, what I have. All resources, which we're using here. Yeah. Okay. Sanford, you had a, a question, Sanford. Yes, vitally, thank you. Um, how willing are the people who are in the discovery groups, how willing are they to put something into practice from what they hear God saying to them through the Bible study? Mm. Yeah, uh, good question. Thank you. Uh, it's a just simple way. Uh, some of them, for example, in the end of uh, when I'm asking, uh, just we read how God created the world, first Genesis, and how you can apply. This one woman says that, oh, 
I see that God is uh, like planning his work step by step. It's like, so uh, uh, I, I know here, uh, so we, we are here and we have to be like, uh, we have to be like a God, like planning our like new life, maybe here, I don't know, but step by step. Mm. So we have to follow him in this. Like, this is like simple uh, example how they, uh, so uh, another woman says, says, oh, I like that way. Uh, I will, I forget when I last uh, time I, I had a plans. So uh, tomorrow I will sit on my computer and make a plan for a week or for two weeks what I have to do, my next step. So it's like simple appliance. It's not uh, something big. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Jeff, uh, you had a question too, Jeff Crabtree. <clears throat> uh, Vitaly, thank you for your ministry, brother. God bless you. Hey, uh, what, what's the greatest challenge you're facing right now in multiplying disciples? Oh. The greatest challenge um, the, uh, here with the refugees, we see the biggest challenge that people moving, but uh, at the same time, it's a big opportunity because when they lead the, so we encourage, we, uh, in, even here in our group, some people will move to Warsaw from Italy and we, and that group, not me, I was surprised that that group encouraged that people, you have to plan the same group as we had here, as you had here. So in Warsaw, with your, uh, your friends, just plan the same, do the same. And that people who was yesterday and Thursday just encouraging them to do the same. So because the simple process and people like easily can repeat it, it's just simply simple. But um, um, connected because the distance they move in always it is very hard and it's a big challenge i think uh, right now uh in ukraine we have we have another challenge that people are uh like moving in the fork you don't know your next step you don't know what you're doing is make sense or not today so like they in depression so this is a big challenge uh, because uh, the emotionals uh, not stable emotionals. So. You, you mentioned to I'm me, not, I think a lot alone of your future, so. <laughs> Yeah, you mentioned to me a lot of your meetings are underground um, just because of the, the fear of the attacks that are happening. Yeah, yeah. People uh, cover them. Some people cover themselves when they hear the uh, airwave, uh, but some not. Just walking because they don't care. It's just it can happen. It cannot. So I just continue walking. <laughs> my follow my schedule. So like, oh, uh, it depends. The different people. Their reaction is very very different. Yeah. You, you have no problem. Uh, just. Uh, I told about um, biggest like challenges in the spiritual thing, but now we have also challenges because uh, you know they destroyed uh, like about forty percent of our electricity system. So we now have challenges to find uh, um, uh, generators, and even now I'm just on my way to the factory where I'm producing generators in, in Italy to buy and send. Uh, for some of our leaders uh, who has a house uh, to create a space when they will do something like they don't have a light, so they will have a generator and a fuel to continue because the temperatures stay colder and colder in Ukraine. Yeah. So we have a cold winter. So. so pray for that as well. So many prayer needs, but we. He believe that God amazing and he changing the bad things for the good things. I believe in that. <laughs> but anyway, we prepare in ourselves for the bad times. Um, and we expect that wanna... we'll be worst because last time we are living. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. 
we we want to pray for you. Um, but before we do that, oh, um, you. if you had a, a word, if you had a word from God for us, what would it be? Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you've been in the, the States uh, several times, and and if you had something that maybe God put on your heart um, for us, um, we'd love for you to, to share that. Yeah. Uh, I know. Um, when I heard it before the war started, uh, that people and Christians especially have to be prepared for suffering. I don't care about that because I don't see the suffering in my life. And just I'm 40 years old, I never seen that so much suffering and that no persecution that I have to be prepared. But now I see that it happens like in one day. So if you're not prepared, oh, it will be hard to survive. So um, that I think why Jesus says that you have to be prepared. You have to know that it can happen with anybody. So if you're prepared, you are in full like armor, <laughs> protections. It's good for you. <laughs> so it's very good to be prepared for for suffering. Yeah. This is the word. <laughs> Maybe you could share just a couple of the greatest needs that you have, um, you and your your leaders, uh, the people of Ukraine, and then we'll just go go into a time of prayer. <clears throat> Oh, as I told you that, uh, pray for that family who lost their son just uh, two weeks ago. Uh, Ruslan and, and Natasha, Natalia, Ruslan and Natalia. Um, so pray for the warm houses during the winter because uh, winter is strong. And uh, if they will destroy, continue to destroy our electricity system, uh, now the Russia, you know, that it hurt about you may can read it in the news that they bring in drones uh, not drones like ballistic uh, missiles from iran they bought some so we don't have enough um, uh, air protection because the ukraine is a big country um for the safety i don't know and uh, the same the same time uh god give us the supernatural power and Holy Spirit, Spirit to continue to move and make disciples in this situation. This is our calling because uh, in the end of all, in the end of all, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's no, there's no big boat. There's no vacation from making disciples, right? <laughs> uh, we do yeah, that. No, no vacation. No. <laughs> well, cool. Yeah. Plus, well, us just pray. Even now in this period, it's harder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, cool. Well, we want to pray for you and just your leaders there, and for the people of Ukraine. And so, um, yeah, Cindy, do you want to just go ahead and start us off with that, and then anybody can join in and and pray whatever God puts on your heart. We just want to thank you, Vitaly, for taking the time to share with us. Um, yeah. This has been really thank scary. you guys um, for prayers. It's been really good and support. Amen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for again just technology that allows us to connect across the world. Literally, thank you for that. Thank you for our brother Vitaly and his team and his church and we just lift them up to you we thank you for them we thank you for protecting and strengthening and encouraging them and we pray for more of that um, as he as he asked for boldness for strength um, i pray for unity in their in their team and that you would continue to connect them with with people who you are preparing people who are hungry people who are receptive to you 
Um, we play, we pray your blessing, especially on the, the family who lost their son recently. Would you comfort them? Um, help them to find comfort in their fellowship in their brothers and sisters and uh, just meet them, especially how they need Lord. Uh, we just thank you for this time and um, yeah, bless our brother. We pray. Lord, I just pray for Vitaly, and I just pray that you would just um, encourage his heart in the work of service and just give him the words, draw the people, Lord, your Holy Spirit draws people to you. And I just pray that you would just use him as a vessel to share your word, share the gospel and disciple others in a, in a continuum. And I just pray that those disciples make disciples and those disciples make disciples. And that's the whole reason for this meeting even. Lord, I just pray that you would encourage his heart, put a hedge of protection around him. And I pray that you would show yourself strong as a provider and meter of their needs, Lord, this, this fall and winter, through the winter, that you would give them the warmth, that you would find help them to find um, community and help them to find provision, um, whether it's heat or food or or spiritual care, Lord. And I just pray that you would um, just send people to help him come alongside of him and his family and to um, strengthen him in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I just uh, want to pray that there would be an end to this evil that there'd be an end to this destruction, Lord, and, and all the harm is taking place. Lord, we pray that you bring peace, Lord, that you'd restore, Lord, um, Ukraine and the people there, Lord. Um, God, would you just intervene in a powerful way, Father, and we ask this in your name. Lord, we uh, thank you for Vitali's uh, word of exhortation to us to be ready for persecution. And um, <clears throat> he and many of the Ukrainians um, are facing this persecution right now, as well as many other Christians around the world, of course. So, Lord, we want to stand united together as the body of Christ. We want to support each other and we want to learn from our brothers and sisters who are facing more difficult circumstances and are still able to make disciples, uh, maybe make disciples faster than we can in, in uh, our parts of the world. So thank you for this exaltation. We pray you bless our brother and his family and um, make them even more fruitful, Lord. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, I also want to thank you for the amazing um, work that you are about. Lord, as you've sent um, our, our dear Ukrainian uh, brothers and sisters in Christ into various nations throughout Europe, Lord, that the disciple-making movements are um, happening, Lord, um, in, in many and various places um, where secularism and humanism has, um, has, has overtaken um, so much of Europe, um, postmodern or post-Christian Europe. Lord, thank you that in your uh, economy, God, that you continue to do all things well. Um, yet, Lord, I do pray as well for Ukraine. Um, Lord, for the church in Ukraine, God, for those um, who are not yet believers there, God, I pray that um, the good news of Jesus will come into their hearts, into their lives, into their minds. Um, Lord, that, that there will be more and more opportunities um, to share the good news of Jesus with those around about them. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, to this end, I pray for Vitaly, for other brothers and sisters there. God, that as others have prayed, that you will strengthen them. God, that you will um, be their uh, rear guard. <laughs> Lord, that you will be the one who um, surrounds them and goes before them and, and leads them and guides them. 
Uh, Father, show them your ways. And Jesus, I, I do pray, God, for just the, the real practical needs they have as, as winter is quickly coming. God, um, meet them, Father, and um, provide every resource that they have need of. Um, Lord, continue to um, yeah, bring forth um, generous uh, beneficiary people. Lord, who are willing to give and to um, help meet the needs. Um, Father, we do pray that uh, that this conflict would end soon. Mm. Um, in Jesus' name, I pray. And Father, Vitaly has mentioned the openness of the Ukrainian people. And I pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon that openness in their hearts and minds to help them to keep crying out to you so that as they seek you, and learn to seek you with all their heart, that they might know that you are their provider, that even in the face of death and trouble, that you bring the right people and the right resources at the right time for the extension of your kingdom. May your kingdom come, Lord Jesus. Yes, right. yes. yes Lord, I do pray that your kingdom will come. Just continue to pour out your spirit uh, in that place. Lord, there's no place on earth that your spirit can be excluded from. I just thank you for Vitaly and his team and that you've placed them to be your image bearers there of your wonderful love and grace and mercy. And so, Lord, I just pray that you'll deeply empower Vitaly and his team, his family. Um, yeah, just come Holy Spirit and just encourage them even right in the midst of very deep suffering and loss uh, we just thank you that we can talk to somebody who is in a situation like that uh, with the technology uh, that we just know lord that you are moving across this earth and you your way will win in the end we just thank you for that thank you that we're part of a story that you are in control of and nothing can come against your purpose for your people. Thank you. Um, I know that Vitaly has to, to get to a meeting, but David, I, I wonder if you could just read the two passages that you put up. Um, yeah, I, when, uh, sure, absolutely. The, uh, the word that kept coming to me was comfort, and it came on the, really the docs were talking about how hard the winter could be, and I saw Vitelli handing out in the picture, just in the spirit anyways, I see a picture of him handing out these plush blankets, you know, in, here in Canada that we love to be warm. So <coughs> it's not, nothing, for, winter is not foreign to us. Um, but uh, the blankets could both, both be practical, but I really, I see this in the spiritual Vitelli. I just, I wanna encourage you that I believe that your words bring comfort to people. And, you know, they honestly need to know that God hears them and sees them. Uh, the beautiful thing about listening to the Spirit is, is that God will give us, uh, oftentimes, God will give us words that apply right to the things of their heart. And so I just I want to bless and encourage you to walk in that. And I just see God using you in very uh, deep and meaningful ways that brings comfort to people. Thank you, thank you very much for your words and very encouraging me. It's your prayers. I believe that God gave us the victory in this terrible situation. And uh, we have a lot of fruits. I believe in that. And you are part of that because you're praying for us. Thank you. Um, David, go ahead and just read those passages as we, we close today. I think they're yeah, sure. They're, they're Absolutely. declarations. Absolutely. Uh, the first the passage that actually came to me was Isaiah 40, verse 1. And of course, yeah, per, uh, people in, in turmoil and speaking to God's people, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. And 2 Corinthians 1, 3 and 4, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, <clears throat> who comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. Uh, so I, I believe that that's just even an encouragement to you, Vitaly. Be comforted. 
be comforted and go and minister in, in that. I don't think you have to manufacture that in and of yourself. I believe that God is going to give you a great grace for this. Is it right if I go ahead and pray a prayer? Sure, go for uh, it. Thank you. <clears throat> Father, I, I just thank you that you have divine purpose for Ukraine and your church in Ukraine. And Lord, even as... Uh, the Ukraine is a breadbasket in uh, Europe uh, with great harvest. Lord, I just pray that you pour out your spirit over Ukraine in such a mighty way that through the suffering, even with the suffering and the persecution and the war, that many seeds germinate unto revival as you pour yes, out your spirit upon them, Lord, in a mighty way, in a mighty move of God that not only uh, moves through Ukraine, but all of Europe and even into Russia, that they be a blessing even unto their enemies. Mm -hmm. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah, thank Amen. you so much. Thank you, Vitaly, so much for giving us time to, to just uh, be Thank with you. you. I was really happy to see you and uh, to be with you. And thank you for your prayers. Um, thank you very much. Thank you for this time together. Yeah, for your support. God bless you. You.